December 20th, 2018. From El Cajon, California, this is episode 170 of You Can Bet On That. Hi everybody, welcome to You Can Bet On That, a podcast for the recreational gambler. My name is Mark Duvall, and sitting across from me is Dr. Mike. Hello. Mike, I am a convert. To what? To face up high gal poker. Oh, God. This last week, you had you were working late. Yeah. Uh, so I went up early by myself. So we drove separately to the casino. And I decided, well, I'm not going to play craps till Mike gets here. I think I'll either play bubble craps or I'll try face up high gal poker, which I hadn't played yet. So I sat down and played it. Yeah, I love it. Uh, it's <laughs> it's and you know you were talking about oh where's the fun in that but sometimes the hands can be really interesting there was one that I showed you before yeah, we yeah. we started that's a, a little complicated to explain on the air but it makes it interesting it was a push that would have been a loss yeah it's basically you played a hand there was no way in the world you'd ever play that way in regular in, pie in gal. regular pie yeah. gal no way would it even occur to you to play <laughs> no. that way but you played that way to get a push instead, instead of, of a loss, loss. Right. right and then there was another hand where the dealer had king high. And I had a pair of aces with no head. We did, the head is the two card yeah, hand, the top. The, the top. A pair of aces. So I split up the aces, which you would never do either, right? Because right. the dealer had king high, was able to win on that. Yeah. And only once when I was playing did the dealer get an ace high, you know, which is a push for all players. But I would have pushed anyway because I don't know. I had like a straight with no head, something like that. So. How was the pace of the game? Wonderful. It was? Yeah. it's Mike, it's just as fast, if not faster, than regular pie gal poker. Really? Yeah, because there's no commission. Yeah, that's Right? True. So they don't have to do that right, at all, right? Right, There's none of don't that. Don't have to figure it out. Well, and plus you see the dealer's hand immediately, so mm-hmm. people can set their hands probably a faster. I, They're not vacillating. They don't have right. to. Yeah. They, they, should I, mean, I play two pair or should I play pair pair? Right. They, they, they just know automatically what they mm-hmm, should do, right? Yep. Okay. And I think it was Todd Goddess who said that really what you should do is don't even look at your hand. And in fact, nobody at my table was looking at their hand until the dealer had exposed their hand. Right. Right. Wait to see what the dealer's going to play to see what you need to do. And to what get you it need in to your beat. head what you need to be. Yeah, yeah. Right. And right. don't just set it normally. Like that one I showed you earlier. I actually had to think about it for a second, right? right. I think so. Right. <laughs> but all right. Well, then let's see how much. Uh, yeah, now, now here's the real clincher. All right. Did you win or lose? Well, it, hey, at face okay. up pie. Yeah. I lost Did, at face, right. up, <laughs> face up pie gal, but I would have lost $50 more. If I'd been playing regular, regular pie, pie gal poker, gal. plus all the the Andes, all so the wait big. a minute, you would have lost more playing regular, mm-hmm. but you lost playing face up. Maybe you should play craps, <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> which you won at. That's for always the night, a guarantee. Well, right? okay, yeah, yep, I did on that did, particular you night. You did win. For I can't the night. fight that logic, Doctor Mike. <laughs> well done. So you played two games, and mm-hmm. one you won at, and one you lost. But you're really excited about the one you lost at. <laughs> I'm excited because I don't think I'm going to go back to regular pie gal poker unless <laughs> there's no choice. So anybody on and any of these trips coming up or anything, if you want to play some face up pie gal poker, I'd love to join you. Right. Any okay. like I think there's an event maybe coming up in April. I think that uh, cousin Vito kind of alluded to it on his show. So and, and All right. uh, so well that maybe something coming up. Uh, maybe I'll get a big group to play face up pie gal. <laughs> yep, that's it. <laughs> so let's see. Let's just recap. You're mm. never playing regular pie gal again. You're only playing face up. If there's a choice, right? And and you know I'm not going to play like hundred dollar face up pie gal versus. $25 regular pie yeah. gal poker, right? Well, so. you're full of like um, ultimatums. That it's just like, you know, you're not watching the Chargers anymore, rooting for them because they moved to LA. Yeah. I, <laughs> you're not playing regular pie gal anymore. See, I keep my options open. Oh my gosh. I can't believe you're saying that to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's fun when the tables are yeah. turned, isn't it? All right. It? Well, I, I guess I am a little uh, stubborn when it comes to certain things, but so are you. So I'll we'll just call I it I usually even. get the grief for it, though. Yeah, this, that, this is one time I can give you some grief oh, for, for get, being a little stubborn. So get this. We're playing craps the other night, right? And I don't know what happened. The dice went off the table or somebody bought in. And I said, oh, my bets are off, Wendy. My bets are off. And so you go, oh, duck, 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 Next roll, seven hours. Out. Right. And suddenly you shut up. And then later on, somebody made a point and Wendy said to you, Oh, Mike, you lowered your bet. And you said something like, Yeah, you know, I'm just trying to see how it goes. And so I go, bark, 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 
fuck, 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 fuck. And it was great because the next role was going to be the come out role anyway. So right. that was sweet. Yeah. And Seven did come up the next role. Well, that's fine. It's a come out role. <laughs> right. Well, because like, right when the Seven came up, you said, you all, you see what brought that oh, out? Oh, that's true. Right? The, the, and the then clucking. The clucking brought the Seven you out. You really need a Seven. <laughs> clucking. The, that's a new uh, superstition. That's a new clucking superstition at the table. we have now. Yeah. Because then when the come out role, it was Seven on the come out. And Wendy said, oh, I guess it's the clucking. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, here's another game that I played at Harris Southern California that I'm not quite as crazy about. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this one you you didn't like and you didn't do well at it. No. It, okay. So th- sometimes when they feature new games at Harris Southern California, it's kind of at this end cap table. Right. right? It's right by the cashier. It's very visible. They right. want to see how well, much traffic it, yeah, they can generate. The elevators, that when you come into the casino or the front door, you have to see Yeah, that it's like the first, first table. Yeah. Right. right. So this game was called Premium Hold'em. And the closest, it, it's kind of a variation on Ultimate Texas Hold'em, except the player and the dealer are dealt three down cards. And there are four cards on the board instead of five. So you make your five-card hand with you know your three and then the shared four on the board. So in Ultimate Texas Hold'em, you make your bets, and then you get your two cards, and you can increase your bet or check, and then there's a flop of three cards. Once again, you can increase your bet if you haven't already done so, or check. And finally, the last two cards of the board are revealed, and then you can increase your bet, or at that point, you have to fold. That's Ultimate Texas Hold'em, right? That's a right. pretty popular game now. Of, of the Carnival games, it's it's gaining popularity. It's, it's very popular. Yeah, so, and the only reason I bring this up is to kind of emphasize the differences between Ultimate Texas Hold'em and this new game, Premium Hold'em. In Ultimate Texas Hold'em, you have three chances to increase your bet before you have to fold or you know make a decision. Three chances. So in Premium Hold'em, you and the dealer are both dealt three cards down. As soon as you look at your cards, you can make a play bet equal to three times your ante bet, or you can check. And then all four community cards come out at once. And then at that point, you can make a play bet equal to or double your ante bet, or you can fold. So those are the only okay. you know two times there. Right. So in premium hold'em, you just have two opportunities to increase your bet before you fold. Otherwise, the mechanics are similar to ultimate Texas hold'em. Now, the payouts, I'm not going to go through all the specific payouts because I don't think this game is going to catch on. I think it might actually have an easier basic strategy. And in fact, Steve at discountgambling.net figured that if played correctly, it has a lower house edge than Ultimate Texas Hold'em. Yeah, well, there's because there's fewer opportunities to raise your bet. That would make sense. I guess. I mean, you know, you you have to go through the math to actually figure it out. But, you know, Ultimate Texas Hold'em has already established itself as a pretty popular carnival game. And, you know, a variation on that, I just don't see it catching on. In fact, the the dealer I had, his attitude, he didn't say this, but his attitude was kind of like, yeah, this game sucks. Right, yeah. (laughs) Didn't you get that that sense? Oh, yeah, definitely. I was watching over your shoulder. (laughs) He definitely was not thrilled dealing it. (laughs) Well, let me tell you, anytime you put premium in front of something, look out. (laughs) Seriously, (laughs) in life, if you buy the premium stewed tomatoes, Uh they're the same stewed tomatoes in the cheap brand. They just put premium in front of them. Really? But they cost more. But they cost more, right. You're getting screwed anytime premium is put in front of something. Okay. So avoid premium. Premium. Watch for the word premium. Okay. So avoid premium. Well, like I said, I don't think this game's going to catch on. They've already removed it from the floor. Last right. time we were up yeah, there, they were tearing the table apart, anymore, right? Yeah. So, But I only bring it up because we played it. Speaking of, of new table games, if you're interested in learning some new games, Michael Shackelford, a.k.a. The Wizard of Odds, recently attended the Cutting Edge Table Games Conference at Paris, Las Vegas. You know, it's kind of like G2E, except it's just table games. You know, it's no right. machines, no, no machines. video poker, or anything like that. Right. Anyway, he has posted a ton of videos explaining the games and interviewing the people who are presenting the games. Just go to youtube.com slash the odds must be crazy. All one word, the odds must be crazy and click on videos. He's got a bunch of them up there. That's really good. So check that out. Um, I'm laughing because at premium, you didn't play very long, <laughs> No, I but didn't. you didn't win a hand. I, right? I I think I won one hand. Did yeah. you? Yeah. I mean, I remember I had two pair. Remember I said, "Hey, oh look, I, I had like a crappy three cards." But then oh, when the board came out, I had two pair, two right? Pair. And one with that, yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I do remember. But that, that was but the I, only hand. Yeah, I remember sitting there thinking, "Is he ever going to win a hand?" <laughs> I mean, because it was pretty bad. Yeah, yeah, it was bad. And I wasn't I, I wasn't making any of the side bets. You know, a lot of times the side bets well, are where you make your them, money, right? Yeah, I don't think any of them would have paid. <laughs> oh no, no, we were watching. I was very lucky to have not made any of the side bets. Yeah, that's true. 
Oh, I got a little something special for Tim Lawson here. You ready? All right. Hey, thanks to everyone who's been clicking through our Amazon link. Remember, whenever you're going to buy something through Amazon, please go to our page first, you can bet on that.com, and click through our Amazon link towards the top of the page. All right, let's move on to our voicemail hotline. Remember, call our hotline at 951 292 4377. That's 951 2 Wagers. 951 2 Wagers. And maybe we'll play your clip on the show. First up is Matt. Hey, Mark and Dr. Mike. This is Matt from Collegeville. We're on the Vegas Blitz. You have to do at least one bet, one drink at each casino. We're trying to do 52 today. Progress report. So far, we are at Paris, Casino Royale, Mirage, PI, Venetian, Palazzo, Win, and Encore. I'll check it later. Okay, bye-bye. 52 casinos they're going to try to do. Wow, in and, a day. And we're going to hear back from Matt. I'll tell you what. I could never do that. Because you couldn't get me out of a casino that fast. <laughs> I mean, right. you've got to really get in and get out, it's right? Got, right, one bet, one drink, Yeah. right? Well, you know, that I could do. It's just that I wouldn't stop at one bet. That's the thing. You wouldn't stop <laughs> right there. Now, we received this call from Matt at 5.45 p.m., and we're going to get some more calls from him later, so we'll see how All he's right. doing, okay? <laughs> it's interesting to progress, see his progress yep, through exactly. the casinos. Yep. All right, next up is Cody. Hey, Mark, Dr. Mike, this is Cody from Alabama calling about uh, the closing of the Tunica Roadhouse, listening on the this latest episode's podcast. You mentioned it. You know, sad to see that property go. It's actually right next door to the uh, other Caesars property that's in Tunica, uh, the Horseshoe. You could actually stand outside and throw a football and, and hit one building from the other. So they're, they're literally right next door to each other. The letter I got in the mail said that they were going to keep the actual hotel part of the Tunica Roadhouse open, but just close the casino. The Tunica area, as you guys mentioned, has struggled pretty mightily in the last few years. I think I read um, a story in the Memphis uh, Commercial Appeal that said in 2006, the revenue from gambling in the Tunica area was $1.6 billion, and in 2017, that number had dropped to $880 million. So it's all roughly half of what the profit was just, you know, a decade before. And I think there's several reasons for that. One, the story mentioned, uh, the 2011 flooding that really damaged the area and damaged a few properties in Tunica. The Mississippi River, uh, flooded during that time period. Um, another reason is just kind of the expansion of gambling in, uh, Arkansas for sure. And then also in Missouri, which, you know, took a lot of the clients. Uh, and customers from the area. But, you know, I guess my question is, have you guys heard of another area in the country uh, maybe that's been hit? I know Atlantic City has kind of been up and down in recent years, but, you know, there are other areas of the country that, you know, at one time were kind of gambling hotbeds, but they've, you know, business or the economy has really driven them down. Anyway, enjoy the show. Thanks. I can only really think of Atlantic City. That's kind of the obvious one. That's an obvious one. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, in 2008, when the economy took a dump, mm -hmm. Vegas definitely took a hurt. Uh, well, I'll tell you. I mean, I got so many more offers after that yeah. from casinos at places I hadn't been in years, but they're you know sending me offers trying to get you to come, mm -hmm. right? Because nobody was going, right? I think that's actually Vegas. You could say Vegas is a victim of... The Indian casinos. The Indian casinos and, and all of that stuff, but they were smart and they sort of reinvented themselves. I mean, gambling is still right. a huge part of it, but gambling revenue is way down, at least as far as strip casinos go. Right, sure. And it's much more event-driven as far as you know shows and, and restaurants clubs and clubs and, and stuff, stuff like that. Like that. Yep. So yeah, Vegas might be the other answer. It's just that yeah. you know they, were, they had a, another plan. Uh, I would like to see what gambling has done in the last 10 years. Well, you, yeah, you can look all that stuff up. I and, mean, it, I'm sure it's down. Oh, well, it's definitely down. Yeah. You know, as far as gambling revenue goes, it's right. down. But then other things are up, the hotels. Right. The, and right. It, we're talking about well, the Well, it became strip, a destination yeah. and not a gambler's yeah. Yeah. thing. And we're, we're you see that a lot. Yeah, we're talking about the strip. We're not talking about local properties or even downtown where gambling right. is still king. Well, so. local properties probably... St stay pretty steady because they're getting their revenue mostly from locals, mm -hmm. whereas the Strip gets most of their revenue from people coming. And I think a lot of that is affected by, I know Californians, there are so many Indian casinos now mm -hmm. in California right, right. that that's got to hurt Vegas. Right. Right. I mean, it's, look at us. Sure. We definitely go less. We go a lot less. Yeah. But in a place like Tunica, I think you're right. Tunica is a place where people would go to gamble. It's not like right. there were a lot of locals going no, to Tunica. No, There's no, nothing there, no, really. That's so, people going to yeah, gamble, yeah, right? Yeah. And they're probably more hurt by economy 
than like Indian casinos and stuff like that. Although I, I sure that has some effect. Yeah, and, and but, people just aren't thinking, oh, let's go to Tunica because they're either thinking let's go to our local place or let's go to Biloxi again. They're not that close, right. but you know. So, all right, let's hear from Adam. Hey guys, it's Adam from Connecticut. Uh, quick report from MGM Springfield. Just got done playing. It's been a little while since I played. Um, walked out with a little bit of extra money in my pocket. Um, I started doing, uh, you know, Dr. Mike started speaking on my shoulder as the devil. Uh, what I'm doing with each shooter is I'm throwing a dollar on each hard way. When it hits, I parlay it, and then I start collecting from there. So up a little bit, bit of money. One bad thing is uh, they took away the all tall, all small. Um, I guess what happened was the company that owns that bet had a problem with their licensing agreement, so they took it away. But from what I heard, they're uh, trying to get the fire bet approved for those tables. So that'll be great. Anyway, uh, it was a pretty good trip. Hope to hear from you guys soon. Thanks. Hmm, that's interesting because MGM yeah. Springfield, I mean, just opened, right? So Right. So they, they would they have, have that worked out ahead of time? Yeah, I don't know. Interesting. Well, I'd, I'd like it if the fire bet came back. Yeah, it's I you mean, know it's, it's disappearing so much. Maybe yeah. it's going to start reappearing in certain <laughs> It'd places. It'd be nice just, if it did because it saves me money. Because you're betting too much on all tall, small. small. You're not yeah. betting as much. I'm not nearly betting as much on the fire bet. Yeah. Well, good. When you're in, in March, when you're in Boston and you go to MGM Springfield, right. which you've promised to do, I think no, you no, swore no. to that, I, actually. No, I didn't swear to it. And I didn't <laughs> promise anything. All right. Well, maybe there'll be a fire bet there <laughs> if you go. Yeah. We'll see. We've got a lot to do in Boston. Yeah. All Turns right. out there's stuff to do in Boston. Really? Besides, that whole Besides area? gamble. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. Who would have thought? All right. Let's see how Matt and his buddies are doing. Mark and Dr. Mike, Matt from uh, Collegeville again here, still on the Vegas split. So uh, since I last talked to you, we did lots of fun, Circus Circus, SLS, Aztec, Stratosphere, The D, El Cortez, Fremont, Four Queens, Binion, Golden Nugget, Golden Gate, and the Plaza. One thing we found that was interesting was Binion's apparently has two-ball roulette. So I don't know if you guys ever saw that, but it shoots two balls out at the same time. So you actually end up with two numbers. So that was kind of cool. Uh, I'll check it with you later. Okay, bye bye. We got that call at twelve forty-five a.m. And as far yeah, that we haven't talked about this double ball roulette. It's a gimmick. You know, it's it's right. one of those things that right. you know just isn't going to catch on. But it's kind of fun to see. So yeah. yeah, well, we're used to single balls. Yeah, that's <laughs> you got that right, Doctor Mike. <laughs> All right, next call. Hey, how's it going, Mark and Doctor Mike? This is Randy from New York, one of your younger listeners. I'm 25, and what do you know? My favorite game is craps. I just had a question on how to improve my playing style. I usually play the pass line with double odds and two numbers up top, and when I roll, I'm usually making other people tons of money, but I'm just a little up over my buy-in. Should I be covering the numbers up top and maybe throw some money on the hard ways? Uh, That's one of my biggest questions. Thanks. Love the show. Hope to see you guys in AC one day. Bye-bye. Randy, you're doing fine, all right? <laughs> Most definitely, you should cover all the numbers and make the hard way bets. Oh, oh Dr. Mike. <laughs> as soon as he said that, I'm thinking, oh, God, he's asking the wrong two people. Hey, you know, big roles, of course, you're going to see people sure. making a lot of money. But, you know, those same people who are making tons of cash, they're losing a lot, too, when yeah, the dice get cold, right, and they're going right. to get cold. And so. the older he gets and the longer he plays, that's going <laughs> to become very apparent. <laughs> right. So, no, don't think about making money at the craps table <laughs> think about having fun right because in and the if long you run happen you're not to make, make a little it, money then that's, that's nice. great yeah if you're making a little bit for yourself you're ahead of the game right good <laughs> advice for our young listener <laughs> very good advice <laughs> now when he comes to play with us i'll oh it'll be a whole different <laughs> yeah, story I'll give him the real that's scoop. right randy cover the numbers <laughs> you don't have enough hop bets out there <laughs> yeah really hop the three on every roll <laughs> <laughs> all right let's check in with matt again Hey, Mark and Dr. Mike, update on the Blitz. Just got done with the Main Street Station, California, Downtown Grand, Westgate, Silver 7, Hard Rock, Tuscany, and Ellis Island. One interesting thing about Tuscany there, when we walked in the door, they didn't say welcome or, hey, do you want to play some giving games? They said, are you lost? Which I found interesting. You know, so it's kind of an interesting business model there. They were trying to give us a direction to somewhere else, or I, I don't know. And we also lost a person. We're down, uh, we started with three people doing a blitz. We're down to two. So we dropped at number 24. So 29 casinos in, 29 drinks, 29 bets. 
Okay, bye-bye. All right, so yep. w- one person at least dropped out. Yeah, and that call was at 6.41 a.m. Right. So, so that's th- over 12 hours from the first call, mm-hmm. which was 5.40. And it's overnight, too. It's overnight. Is- <laughs> yeah, it's the next morning. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, those drinks got to start getting harder after 7 a.m. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> We'll see. Are they going to make the 52? Well, Do you, you think they'll have, make the 52? I think they'll make it. But right. if you only have one drink and then you move and go somewhere, it's probably a little easier. If you had like five drinks. No, I understand somewhere. that. But 52 drinks? Yeah, I mean, 50. even watered down drinks. 52 <laughs> yeah. drinks. 52 drinks are a lot. I What was the... Are you lost? <laughs> that would be great I mean, for I anywhere. only get you that. You go into Walmart. <laughs> yeah. Are you lost? Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> We should do that from now on. When we get off a plane, (laughs) as we're disembarking and we come out into the area where people are waiting to get on the plane, Uh we just stop and ask somebody, are you lost? (laughs) (laughs) They would just keep doing it. Down the line, are you lost? Are you... (laughs) Who's lost? <laughs> Here's something so stupid. We used to, whenever we'd get off a plane from Vegas, <laughs> when we'd be home, all right, and we're walking out to the parking lot to our cars. So we have arrived in San Diego, <laughs> right. and we're walking the cars. Mike would pick a random person walking towards the gates and say, welcome to San Diego, <laughs> which made no sense at all. They're, they're, if anything, they're leaving San yeah, Diego. Right, they've already been here. You did that so often. <laughs> of course, I never laughed at the time. I always thought it was so stupid. <laughs> welcome to San Diego. You know, the looks you get at people is like, <laughs> what? I would never do that. that. You've made that up, Mark, because I'm too shy to do that. That is true. <laughs> Why would I make up a story, a story that lame? <laughs> all right, next up is Jamie. Hi guys, this is Jamie from the Texas Panhandle. I just wanted to call with a trip report from November 17th through the 20th. I was there for my 50th birthday. We stayed at Bally's. Uh, they gave us an upgrade to a nice Jubilee mini suite, and uh, it was really nice there. I had some good gambling. I hit a quarter slot machine for a quick hundred, then we took it over to the craps table and had a pretty good session there. Cast out about 200 up, and it just continued throughout the day. We went over to Caesars, and uh, I hit a three of a kind on three card poker for uh, about a $275 hit. We ate at the Sterling Buffet. If anybody's never tried it, it's very expensive, but it's well worth the money in my my estimation. You have to have a reservation there booked up for months. It's only on Sundays at Bali. I also ate off strip at a place called Raku. I saw it on TV uh, on Bizarre Foods America. Andrew Zimmer and Carrot Top both went there together. Uh, it's a small, topless type place uh, in Chinatown. It was very good food. Not quite what I was expecting. Probably would not go back. We uh, saw Absent. Before I talk about it, I, if you are easily offended, this is not the show for you. There's some very crude humor. It's all in good fun, as most humor is, but if you're sensitive to that type of stuff, I would not go. Uh, There's also some pretty neat circus acts, some semi-nudity, nothing completely nude. Uh, Very good show, very funny. Uh, I would go see it again because I can't believe that it would be the same way twice because they were heckling people in in the audience and getting them up on stage and all kinds of stuff is very funny. Um, That's pretty much it for this trip. Love what you guys do. Keep up the good work. Good. Thanks for the trip report, Jamie. Yeah. That Sterling Brunch, I don't think we've talked about it before. I think Tim and Michelle talked about it quite a bit on 500. But yeah, it's expensive. But you know, it's champagne and they right. kind of go all out. It's only yeah, Sunday you at have Bally's. To have reservations. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And then, of course, positive reviews for Absinthe. We've never seen it. It's it, it, Everyone raves it, about it yeah. that I've seen. Yeah. And know. we saw the gazillionaire at yeah, uh, right. Vimp a few years ago. He's very funny. He's so, funny. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny about a show like that. You have to be the right kind of person. Yes, definitely. Yeah, I probably I mean, wouldn't take my mom. Th- no, my, and my dad wouldn't probably not <laughs> no, find it he, all that no, based funny. On, he doesn't like the sexy, sexy button in his face. Yeah, so, right, yeah. so yeah, the partial nudity. Yeah. <laughs> now me, I'm, you know, they should have full nudity. Yeah, a partial nudity to you. That's just another day at the office. <laughs> yeah, that's just work. <laughs> all right, here's a good story from Ryan. Hey, guys, what's going on? It's uh, Ryan from Las Vegas. I just want to tell you guys a little something that happened the other night. I live in the northwest part of Las Vegas. I was at one of the local bars called Big Dog up there the other night, and uh, there was a couple guys that were from out of state, and I guess it was uh, real busy because of the rodeo finals. 
but there was a lot of people that were staying up in our neck of the woods because of uh, the hotel. They're all full down on the strip, so a lot of people were staying up where we were at. Well, anyways, they're sitting at this bar and I overheard these guys talking and the guy's like, man, I can't believe this guy just told me that. And uh, he's kind of showing around this ticket for a sports bet. And I, was, you know, I asked him, I'm like, hey, did you guys win? You know? And uh, he told me the story and he was like, well, this guy just, he has this 10 team parlay ticket and nine out of the 10 teams won. So when nine out of 10 teams win, the ticket, instead of paying 10000 is only going to pay 8000 So I bought the ticket off him for 500 bucks. He sold it to me for 500 because he's leaving town tomorrow. So uh, since 9 out of 10 won, I get 8000 instead of 10 but I only bought it for 500 bucks. So I'm making a lot of money. And I was like, oh, I hate to tell you this, but on a parlay like that, all 10 teams have to win to collect money. He's like, no, no, no. The guy said if 9 out of 10 win, then... It doesn't collect that much, but it collects for the nine win. I said, no, that's not how it works, buddy. That guy uh, gypped you and has to hit all ten out of ten to win. So he was freaking out. He, he was like, well, I'm going to go to the casino right now and cash it in and see what happens. So I just told him, well, good luck, but sorry to tell you, but that guy gypped you. He wouldn't sell you an $8,000 ticket for 500 bucks. Anyway, so that guy got gypped. If you don't know what you're doing with sports beds, uh, I wouldn't pay someone else for a ticket like that. Anyways, guys, glad to hear you guys been on a hot streak. Talk to you guys later. Yeah, you got to watch out for those scams. Oh, my God. I can't believe somebody would fall for I that. I know. It's terrible. It reminds me. I mean, me, if you don't know about sports betting. Yeah, right. Why, I mean, just, why would you even? Yeah. And here's another thing. Along with premium, <laughs> if something is too good to be true, yeah. it's not true. Yeah. That's. 100%. If it seems like it's too yeah. good to be true, it's not true. Who's going to give you an $8,000 ticket right. for 500 right. bucks? It reminds me of another scam, though, that is a little more convincing. And what the scammer does is they say, oh, I've got this lottery ticket. It hit for like $5,000 or whatever, but I'm in the country illegally. Right. And I can't cash it. Right. Right. So, and you know, they've made it up. They show like some results. So then here, I can't cash it, but here I'll sell it to you for, you know, X number of dollars. Right. That's a little more believable, well, <laughs> but it's still, it's a, still, still a scam. Oh, yeah, that's I mean, a terrible story. If you're going to win 8,000 and somebody's going to sell it to you for 500, it's like, why wouldn't they sell it to well, me that, for 4,000? Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. right? Why, and, it's fine. Yeah. Why, right. why 500 bucks? Well, you know, you don't know anything about sports betting. This guy says, yeah, I've got to leave. I'm leaving the yeah. city. Well, mail it in. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, you just, <laughs> yeah. You can mail it right on the back. Yeah. The address is right on the back. Quite a story. Quite a story. Well, yeah. Oh, man. And yeah. 500 bucks, I know. too. I know. Yeah. Mm. All right. Let's see how Matt and his buddies are doing. Or I guess just one buddy now. They're just two They're of them. They're two of them right. now. Yeah. Hey, Mark and Dr. Mike. Checking in from the Blitz. We got Valleys, Cromwell, Flamingo is on to Link, Gold Coast, Rio, Palms, Orleans, Paris, Planet Hollywood, MGM, Tropicana, and Hooters. So we're starting hour 27. We got 10 to go. I got one fun story, I guess. Well, an interesting story. I guess they was playing craps, right? And this guy, the shooter, he made three of his points, and then he switched over to the don't pack which everybody thought was a little strange. But then he was trying to explain, I guess, he was on the fire bet, and he was trying to hedge or something like that. But I don't know if you guys have ever seen that. Okay, bye-bye. Hmm. I, you know, I was listening to this and thinking, well, let's say you've made five numbers. Right. I guess maybe you might consider going on the don't pass at that point, hoping that maybe, you know, the sixth number would be established and then you could lay odds against. I don't know. I, but if it wasn't established, if it was a repeat, yeah, but some other, yeah, it wouldn't make sense, uh, I can't right? Because then you'd want to make it so you could get onto the sixth one. Yeah, this doesn't make sense to me. No, I can't it doesn't it make. Out. There's either we're missing something in the story, or the guy's an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> right? I think not mad. I think it I might mean, be the, the latter. Yeah, yeah, the guy making the bet <laughs> yeah, is right. just an idiot. So now it's four fifty eight. PM right now he said so this is almost twenty four hours. Well, he so. said it was in their twenty seventh hour, so that means when oh, he first okay. called, they'd already they, been they'd doing already it for been a while. Doing it for a while. Right. Okay. So twenty seventh hour, to about five hours. Yeah. So he's still awake and he's still, still going, still drinking, yep. and still moving around. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's, let's see if they make it. <laughs> well, now they got it. Really? You they, think oh, they're going yeah, to? Yeah. Oh yeah. Now it's a matter of pride. Yeah. All right. Next call. Hey guys, uh, this is Donald. 
I'm in Northern Virginia on the East Coast, and uh, I thought I'd call in. I just started listening to your podcast, and I uh, really enjoy it. And I thought I'd call in and give you kind of a report of a place that a lot of people in Northern Virginia go. It's about 45 minutes or so west. It's uh, Charlestown uh, Races. It's owned by Pandemi, and they have three craft tables out there. They have a lot of table games. They usually run uh, one during the week, two to three on the weekend, depending on how busy they are. Typically $10, gets up to 15 if they get a lot of action. But I, the reason why I'm calling is because I've kind of told some folks about your podcast and some of the dealers too, and I tip the dealers a lot, and I, I like to hear you guys talk about that. It's a lot of fun to hear the dealers get a lot of money off of when you guys win. I always say that um, it's more fun when everybody wins. And, you know, they work pretty hard when the tables get busy, and there are a lot of regulars out there, uh, present company included, that – Keep them busy. So, anyhow, it's a nice place to play. Uh, the craft dealers are really great and uh, some really nice people. And, uh, you know, the regulars are, are pretty fun, too. A lot of ribbing and things like that. So, anyway, um, Penn needs to get their stuff together. They've bought a million properties around the United States, and they can't link them together. And I'm sure you guys probably know that with how Caesars is with Tove Rewards sometimes. But, anyhow, I thought I'd give you a kind of a report and tell you I really enjoy the podcast. And, uh Anyone who comes out of Charlestown, if you see me out there, give me a tap on the shoulder and say hi. Thanks. All right, Bye. good. Yeah, thanks, Donald. So, Penn, it sounds like their their program there is not linked into this particular Hollywood casino. You'd think they'd all have that same marquee rewards, marquee you know, rewards, that uh, Penn yeah. National has. Huh. huh. Well, That's, maybe not. I mean, yeah. you know how some of the Caesars properties have different odds on craps for instance yeah right? different things and different right. payouts and stuff maybe yeah. this is just like one that circus circus is an mgm property but they have not been a part of m life i i think i want to say maybe they recently joined but it was always separate for whatever reason right. circus circus had you yeah. know a separate uh club yeah well, that's interesting there, there's probably some legality behind that that makes it conducive for them to be separate yeah, for some reason <laughs> yeah right? that could maybe. be that could be all right here's another call from adam Hey guys, Adam from Connecticut. I uh, just wanted to give you a quick MGM report. Um, I went today to play in the free blackjack tournament that they had going. Uh, basically what it was was $10,000 in chips, $500 a hand minimum. You played 11 hands, pretty much a, a luck box tournament. You have 11 hands. There's a five-hour preliminary play period. Uh, anywhere between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m., they would fill the table up and just get it going. So 11 hands, the top 18 stacks out of that five-hour period moved on to the semifinals, um, and then that's where the prizes started. So uh, I was out in three hands, so I figured, you know, I made the 25-minute drive up. May as well play some craps. So I bought in for 350 and cashed out for 899 by far my biggest win uh, in a single crap session. Nice. And I was just doing, started out real conservative, pass line with single odds, and one come bet with single odds. As I started winning... Um, I started increasing the three combats with single odds and pressing my odds up a little bit. And then uh, as a nod to Dr. Mike, I went with a dollar each hard ways. It would hit the first time I'd parlay, and then I would just start collecting. There was one shooter that hit three hard fours in a row. So, the you know, I collected on two of them, um, and it just stayed up. At one point, I had all of my hard ways pressed, and then the four, the ten, and the six all hit. All in all, a great day. Dealers got tipped a ton. The table boss was freaking out a little bit because they were uh, almost completely out of $5 chips and it was a $10 table. So they, they certainly needed those $5 chips. I think they had, when I looked down last, they had uh, two stacks of $5 chips when that shooter finally summoned out. All of that money was made off of that one shooter. It was a phenomenal roll, by far the best craps roll I've ever seen. All right. I'll talk to you guys later. Good. Congratulations, Adam. Yeah, I like nice. your strategy at the tournament, you know. Oh, go yeah. for it. Balls out. If you don't win, go play some craps. I'm glad that he mentioned this tournament because when we've talked about blackjack tournaments in the past, a typical tournament or very common tournament is where you will be at a table in a round. Right. And in order to move on, you have to have the most chips on that table right. to move you on to the to, next you round. You have to win your table. Your table. Or sometimes on. it's like the top two move on. Right. But here's a tournament where... They're just a bunch of rounds going on for a few hours, and only the top chip stacks from that whole five-hour period move right. on. So you don't know when you're playing at a table 
if you know you might have the most chips on the table it might not mean anything right. so, this is a much different strategy than yeah. we've talked about before before with the typical tournament we say well watch how everybody else is betting right, and do right. the opposite with this you bet the maximum you can and you make crazy decisions like you right. split tens right. you double down on blackjack right because you've right? only I got mean, 11 you, hands yeah, and you've got to get yeah. as much money as you can in 11 hands yeah so in that you just go crazy you get as right. much money on the table as you can always right. split always double down <laughs> Yeah, so right. yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a totally different strategy. Yeah, it sounds like he did it right, like but, you yeah. said, going out in three hands. That's the yeah. way to do it. You got to go for it. He yeah. went. I, I said balls out, but he went ball out because we're single ballers. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I'm glad you uh, remembered that because you mentioned that earlier in the <laughs> I show. Mentioned it earlier. <laughs> All right, let's check in with Matt. Hey, Mark, Doctor Mike, just finished up our last fifty second casino, and we're done. The blitz is complete. Two victors have. Victor, okay, <laughs> there you go. Oh. <laughs> Hi, this is the uh, rules lawyer of Blitz. Two people have successfully completed the Blitz. One has flunked out, <laughs> technically twice, because he showed up again and then bailed out again. But uh, we did 52 casinos all in one run. Uh, we had to get one drink at a casino, and you had to drink it and finish it. And then you had to make one table bet. It had blackjack, crafts, roulettes, anything like that. Had to make one bet, win or lose, doesn't matter, one drink. Had to be contiguous. The rules for moving between casinos is you're allowed to go on foot or use public transportation, but you cannot use a private car or an Uber or a cab or anything like that. You have to use the infrastructure that had existed. So, yes, it took us, what, 33 hours? 33 hours to complete. Uh, we'll have official times for you tomorrow when we're more coherent. Uh, Matt is not in great shape. <laughs> I still think I'm better off than he is. Sounds that way. <laughs> but yeah, we did it. We completed it. We have set a new record once again this year. 52. I will see you next year at 53. Well, we'll call tomorrow with the official stack. And then next year for 53. Signing out, Dave. The rules lord of the blitz. Thank you very much. Wow, we we actually well, Dave and Matt yeah. have thrown down the gauntlet. <laughs> That's all there is to that. Oh my god, they gosh. have thrown down the gauntlet. Us or somebody we know has got to break that. I don't plan on being the one to break <laughs> that record. That's crazy. Oh my god, it, you know no transportation. No, so they're only walking. public transportation. Bus right, so they give you a bus, but no no. Ubers or cabs or anything, just walking. Oh yes, my gosh, that's rough. that makes it even more amazing. Yeah, that's Thirty-three rough. hours. Yeah, Matt sounded like. I don't this. know if I could stay awake that long, <laughs> even if I wasn't drinking. I mean, just staying awake for thirty-three well, hours. Well, and when did they wake up? Because they started this. It sounded like maybe three in the afternoon, it, something right, like that, right? right? So did they wake up? At t- maybe they did. It's it, Vegas after all, but right. They they actually never called back, so I, I don't. I <laughs> they didn't probably get it. forgot. <laughs> they, probably <have. laughs> they just slept through a day and then woke up and like, oh, let's go home. How was yeah, our trip? Right. I wonder what, what we happened. Do? <laughs> right? They're 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 finding out about it, listening to this show, show now. Right? Oh, that's right. <laughs> Well, the gauntlet's been thrown down. All right. Now, I can't break that. Neither okay. can you. Yeah. We're too old. Yeah. We need some young studs or some young ladies to get out there and do that. All right. Maybe. Well, okay. <laughs> we'll see. And maybe they'll do this again next year. 53 Casino. <laughs> All right. Well, that's going to do it for this episode. Hey, we want to thank some people for some PayPal donations. First of all, recurring donations from Brian Dancer, from Brian and Sarah, and from Josh. Thank you very much. Also, a donation from Todd and Amanda Goddess. Merry Christmas from Todd and Amanda. Hope to see you in Vegas in 2019. Thank you very much. Thank you. Also from Brock, he says, it worked last time. Let's hope it works again. Karma donation for Vegas trip this weekend. Oh, good. Hope you did well on that, Brock. And finally, from our buddy, Dr. Taylor, going to a basketball tournament at Orleans Arena and Christmas this weekend. Tara going for her first Royal Flush. So maybe All right, it's good coming. luck, Tara. It's we'll coming. See. Wait, yeah. Christmas miracle. Yeah, exactly. Hey, be sure to check out our TV listings showing all the gambling-related shows coming up within the next two weeks. We update those listings every Wednesday using a customized program that searches through all the raw American TV data. Just go to youcanbetonthat.com slash TV dash listings. We'd love to hear from you. Call our voicemail hotline at 951-294-377. That's 951-2-WAGERS. Or you can email us at youcanbetonthat at gmail.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at youcanbetonthat and on Facebook at facebook.com slash youcanbetonthat. 
Finally, please go to your favorite podcast app and write a review on us. We love getting your feedback. You know, the last episode, Mike, I handed it over to you, and you immediately said, well, I'm not going to talk about sports. And then you went on about the Chargers for yes. like five minutes. I'd love to go on about them now. Man, no, they no. are so hot. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, that God. win the other night where they went for two. and made Oh, it man. we were. My wife and I were outside screaming. Yeah. I mean, screaming out the back door. Yeah. Uh, you know, all of our neighbors are Charger fans because you know they're they're good people. All right, all right, and, uh, all right. Next, we all uh, do you have another topic for I us? I do have about? another. All topic. right, go ahead. We were talking about you know things that I've said over the years that are <laughs> stupid, uh-huh. and at the time you always think they're stupid, but then you're still talking about them years later. <laughs> you know, do you know what the funniest one was? No, the series, and, and this is uh, Vegas related because we were on a Vegas trip, me, you, and our friend Paul. Okay, and we were sitting in the airport. Port, and for some reason, I had got a bagel and cream cheese. Oh, yeah. Remember that? Mm-hmm, yeah. And Paul, our friend Paul, if you've ever met him, super nice guy, but he doesn't like to be embarrassed. No, and he's very easily embarrassed. He's very mm-hmm. easily embarrassed. So, of course, you know, that leads right into me. Yeah, yeah right? right. And you're not but, easily embarrassed. I'm not right? easily embarrassed. And we're sitting in the airport, and mm-hmm. it's pretty crowded. A lot of people getting ready, to, you know, for Vegas. Mm-hmm. And I'm eating this bagel and cream cheese, and as loud as I could, I screamed out, I'm eating cream cheese! <laughs> and That's everyone so stops and turns. And, you know, what What do you say? What? what, what? <laughs> Is it important? Yeah, Is it like, something about the flight? Like something bad's happened. I just yelled out, I'm eating cream cheese. Paul got so red. <laughs> and this legend has lingered. I remember one trip... <laughs> where Mike was down at the craps table. This was before cell phones. I'm still up in the room. I'm asleep. And the the hotel phone rings. (laughs) And I pick it up. It's Mike has asked to use the phone at the craps table. I pick it up, and all I hear is, I'm eating cream cheese. Click. (laughs) (laughs) So stupid. <laughs> That's going to be the next thing we're screaming out. Just, instead of muckle just, shoot. Yeah, instead of muckle shoot, just, I mean, cream cheese. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what do you say? Is it important? Does it have to do with the dice? <laughs> you know, that's the way life should be. People should just yell out whatever comes to their head. I think they do, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> As it should be. All right. Thanks for listening. Merry Christmas to Oh, everybody. yeah. No, that's right. Guys, Merry- we didn't even see this. Right. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Happy we'll, New Year. We'll see you uh, on the New other Year. side. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>